I can't imagine. I can't either. I didn't even think that it's technically required unless your property required it for some reason. But yeah. like splash blocks are allowed. Right. Hey, watch it, Noah. Do you guys know where the um, 16 dupes are? Yes, I saw them somewhere. Um, well, that doesn't help, does it? They are they over there? Are yeah. not, I believe so. Okay, I'm gonna open up this box. I'm gonna take a decent hammer tacker this time. I'll, I'll take a bad hammer tacker this time. You'll take the what? A bad hammer tacker this time. You'll take a bad hammer tacker this time? You'll yeah. take a bad hammer tacker? Hammer tacker. You, will? you will? You will. Also, the gas really? station has, bad, uh, has a spam used to be. So, do you... Sorry, I was still imitating you. <laughs> <laughs> that hadn't even registered for me. They have what? Spam used to be. Spam, okay, I think... That's a uh, rice. Egg and spam wrapped in food. And that's good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, um, where I don't Nikki. Know if I trust eating spam from a gas station. Well, I guess spam I is like always in a can. You how trust can it you, for Mexican food. How can you make a? How can you make spam like uh, not? Like how can you make it dangerous? It's always the same, right? It's always like in a can. I mean, that's. I guess that's true. I know next to where Nikki used to work. The, it was really good. It has like teriyaki sauce on it. A couple that ran the coffee shop were Hawaiian, so they had all the spam dishes. I, I would do it. I would try it. Yeah. Okay, Noah. I like spam. Yeah. Oh! Let's open this puppy. Virgo licious, so delicious. Virgo licious, definitious. Virgo licious, definitious. Make the boys go loco. Make the boys go loco. Then what? I don't know. That's all I know. Okay, Yay. bring them to us, please. Virgolicious, what is it? Virgolicious def. Virgolicious def. Virgolicious definition. Virgolicious definition. Virgolicious. Boys go loco, and that's literally all I know. Okay, I'll look it up and I'll learn it for you. Make the boys go loco. Virgolicious def. Virgolicious def 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 def. Virgolicious definition. Make the boys go loco. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. Okay. I was doing that for the sake of the video. Okay, bro. Do you think that you are smart enough? Nope. This says forms 24 by 13 deep again. I'm glad we lowered it. Do you think that you're good enough to run one of these by yourself? Yeah. Okay. Then maybe... Like a straight... Oh, uh, yeah. Probably. So we're... Oh, scissors. Skizzers are in my box if you need them. I'll try to use my knife. Noah. And that is the Kyle's sound of Kyle connecting the to the radio. I'm going to play some music under this, this just so I don't get nailed for copyright. On but um, on footing day, it's always good to loosen up the body. And that's basically what we're doing right here. Kind of. Oh, oh nice. I think it's the eye contact. I think if you just did your thing, yeah, don't, you but can't look at you, it's right? like he's looking at me and it's yeah. like, stop looking at me, dude. See? That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't run with scissors. You know that clip of you teaching me Pergolicious is probably gonna make it to the internet. Hopefully. Oh, we gotta do it. We gotta do a story just for the sake of the timestamp. Okay, for the sake of the timestamp, ready, set. Go. Roll. Roll. Ready, set. Roll. Roll. <laughs> you guys are just. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Delicious. Okay, now that that is out of the way, this was such a productive day, uh, but I'm still paying the price for it physically. Oh. <laughs> uh, footing and days. Is, and the wind is here. I don't like footing days. Anyway, so here, uh, I think I mentioned before that I was going to get into the thought process here. 12 inch deep footings. And the nail Normally we would use two by 12 form boards, just to keep the take good care of them and try to use them up as we frame. Place. You know, stair stringers, stair landing, bird blocks, things like that. What we decided to do after talking to Timmy from British Columbia, I'm gonna tag him, awesome framer and foundation guy from um, near Whistler. 
he suggested using the Fabform Fast Foot. So what this is, is it's a bag system. Basically it's a footing liner, as you can see. It's got lines on it to help you align. What you do is you start from each corner and you roll it out and then you can either cut around the corners or you can order um, pre-sewn corners. So let me explain why we decided to do this. <laughs> can you tell it's like 5.30 in the morning as I do this? Let me explain. Anyway, there's, there's the liner system. What this allows us to do is use two by six footing boards. That is less than half the cost of two by 12s. The cost of two by 12s for this footing would be about 3,600 bucks. Maybe a little bit more. The, the job we did just before this, it was 3,400 when I priced it out. So for less than half, we can use two by sixes. It's less weight, less wear and tear on our bodies. It's just easier. It's also faster. Uh, trust me, I've done it both ways. <laughs> Hauling two by sixes is much faster. Oh yeah. The spaghetti incident. Notice that as I'm stapling it, I'm pushing with my left foot to put some tension on the bag. What that allows us to do is to not stress the form as we place concrete. Um, it, it, honestly, when the first time we tried this, I was a little skeptical. I've done this before with like um, plastic or visqueen and it didn't work that well. This stuff does not stretch. So if you put tension on it, now the bag is, would you say pre-tensioned? I don't even think that's the right way to say it. But as the concrete fills, it doesn't pull on the forms. And it doesn't, I know, it, you're probably skeptical like I was, where it's like, how's that supposed to work? I'm way over stapling, by the way. I think they said to staple like every 12 inches. So you can see Kyle here, he's fighting the wind. That's life. It's just the way it goes. Unfortunately, at this spring. The trick to installing this is to run it out like Kyle did, make it straight, and there's a line that runs down the middle of the bag. You actually just take a six penny duplex nail or 16 penny duplex nail, and you pound that into the soil it's not there to hold the bag down, but what it does is it keeps the bag from moving side to side as you place concrete. And then we, we poured this with a line pump. We just asked the guy, you know, pour down the middle and then kind of fill in toward the sides. That worked pretty well. This is the third job consecutively in about six weeks that we used this liner system. The first job, it went really well. We used two by fours. I recommend two by sixes, unless the two by fours are low. We, we were like 14 inches high and it did great. There's a couple spots where the bags ripped away and that was just because we didn't know what we were doing. Um, Timmy, again, this is why you should be on social media. There's great guys like Timmy up in Whistler and they share their knowledge. It's, a, it's an awesome thing. I mean, this was so much easier on our bodies. It was less expensive. Oh, let me come back to what I was saying earlier. All of these two by sixes, are going to get used up in framing because the bags are keeping the concrete separate from the two by six. And you'll see too that there's enough bag length that we essentially fold it over the top. And so very, very little concrete gets on these two by sixes. So let's just use them up during framing. Now we're handling less material. The way that we're looking at this then is that we're not paying for footing materials as in form boards. We're still, you know, paying for clips and stakes and all that, all that stuff that you need. Consumables like nails, staples. But the footing boards themselves get used up in framing, so there is no cost, so to speak. Or at least we don't view it that way. Not like we have a separate footing boards. Additionally, it's just the bags. That's what we're buying for footing boards. Of course, you can't reuse them. But as you can see, we kept getting springtime rain, so there's a good-sized puddle on that right side. Because of the wind, when we had extra dobies, those are those little three inch um, concrete blocks. Because the engineer wants our rebar to be three inches off the soil, we just order dobies, we tie it to the steel, and that's what, that's what gives us our three inch spacing. Here, I'm doing the corners. So we started from a corner, or as like the inside part of the corner, and we go each way. So you see Kyle came to the corner, I started from the corner. Now we just order these the uh, corners. They're pre-sewn from the bags. As, as you can see, I'm still kind of getting the hang of this. This is only the third job. 
the job next door was number two and the one down the street was job number one. Each time we do this, we're getting faster and faster. So we now take half the time as the first job. And to be quite frank, as Noah gets experience, as Kyle and I get better at this, it'll just get faster and faster. So three guys running around with hammer tackers, nice and simple. The, the trick with the corners I've noticed is that if I start with that outside corner, you can see how it's sewn, is if I can get that aligned properly, then when I turn around, the inside corner's really easy. Again, all of the lines help. Then as we pour concrete, it's gonna billow or press out just a little bit before below those forms. Hey, little thing, let me light your candle coat. Cause mama, I'm so hard to handle now. Yes, sir, I am. Yeah. You better than him. Ten cent loving. Hey, you little thing, let me light your candle cold. Mama, I'm so hard to handle now. Yes, sir, I am. Oh. You also notice, it doesn't look like we have very many stakes installed. The reason is, is so that we can staple the bag without going around all of those stakes. Again, that was a pro tip from Timmy. So thank you, Timmy. Hey, it turns out all of us Timmys might have something to offer every once in a while. Same thing, spreader cleats. We'll put those back on as we go. It's just you can't really run out the bags with spreader cleats in the way. The first job, we, we were there with the YouTube video watching how to cut around the corners. The, cor the pre-made corners are much easier. This was kind of annoying because I've got a two-foot corner. And I think if I had a little more experience and a little more, a um, little more, uh, a few, <laughs> it's 5.44 in the morning. I've been up since 4.30. Hey, uh, my brain cells. If I had a few more brain cells, I could probably figure world. out how to kind of cut and bring that around and not have to use two of the pre-sewn corners, but whatever. This you is easy. You can, you, again, you can see I was just pushing with my foot a little bit. I, I For me, what I'm finding is if I get that outside dialed in, then I can turn around to the inside. But I'm you leaving this in real so time so that smart. you could see what you're getting into if you actually were to go with this system. Would I go with this system again? In a heartbeat. And not a, not a blue whale's heartbeat, because they only beat like once a minute or something. Once every three minutes, I forget. There's a, you, you could Google it, the internet will tell you. But I seriously, I would do this again in a heartbeat. Running the bags is so easy. Uh, this is like, the interior strip footings didn't need, didn't need any of this. I'll get into that later when we get to the whole under slab foam and all that stuff. I made a mistake on the previous job. Not really a mistake per se, but just poor planning made for a little more work later. It's, it's, that happens to me all the time. I would do this again in a heartbeat. You're talking 300 lineal foot of footing, you know, and it's double that because you've got an inside and an outside board. So if you're running two by 12 and you're dragging that stuff, you can see this is not an easy day. Everything is bent over. I don't like footings. I've never liked footings. I've always found footings to be the hardest thing on my body. And I'm just going to say this after two of these, and now we're into June. This was mid April. I'm still dealing with the physical effects of being bent over all day. Okay, it takes me about one. three or four months For to get point, over it. Noah. That's with stretching. That's with exercising. Honestly, you know what, you know what actually loosens up my I lower back after footing days? Corner, Framing. Noah. It's just not all bent over work framing. You know, you're up, down, twisting, moving, climbing around on a roof. Anyway, get off of my early morning soapbox. I don't like footings. Let's just, let's just say that. However, I really do like the fast foot. And with the pre-sewn corners, it goes so fast. What's also nice, uh, one thing you should know, you will use a little extra concrete. We figured it was about two yards. That seems to be on these bigger footings. That seems to be, you know, we, we calculated tight then added two yards. Because we have interior strip footings that are gonna get covered with a slab, we were okay with ordering tight and testing. Well, is two yards enough? 
If it's not big deal, we could just leave one of the strip footings and, and pick that up at walls, you know, pour it at walls. But it turns out the two yards was uh, right about there, maybe a yard and a half, yard and three quarters, something like that. So anyway, that's just, I'm just sharing our experience and that way you know. I would highly recommend the fast foot. We don't have a bunch of spill out everywhere. We don't have to spend extra time with our forms. Now, having said that, in the next, well, let's see, the next video, we're gonna get into rebar. The video after that, we'll get into actually placing the concrete and we'll do some of this job and some of the next one just to show you, but not too far from where I'm standing right there. You may have already seen it on YouTube. Well, I'm not even gonna say anything more. I don't really wanna relive that day. That was a tough day. It wasn't the end of the world, but We'll just, we'll just leave this as very uh, non-Hollywood foreshadowing. <laughs> there you can see a little bit better that the bag is a little taller than the forms and that allows us to fold it over. And it just keeps your forms clean. Uh, incidentally, we're in the Pacific Northwest, so the two by sixes that you see there, that's Douglas fir or Doug fir large, it might be a mixture. It's pretty much all Doug fir here. Yeah, so notice the, the, the stance, <laughs> kind of I'm pushing what was pushing with my left foot, but also holding it down with my right foot. And essentially we're like, it, this stuff doesn't stretch, but I like to think of it as pre-stretching or just you, with your feet, spread it so that it's got tension. Then when we staple it over the top, like I mentioned before, there's no pressure down. So it's not gonna, you know, we don't have to go crazy with stakes. It's not gonna spread out because we have spreader cleats. You can see them there laying in the dirt. And so really we don't have to go crazy with bracing. As long as the spreader cleats stay, the tops can't spread. The bottoms can technically rotate or spread, but in, in, in that case, maybe you would want more stakes or more kickers. But what we've been pouring for years, raising like this, and, and it doesn't. So it all has to do too with how you place the concrete and just don't pour super, super loose. We can pour a little looser because of the bags. It doesn't go spilling out, but we still, it's footing. So we like to pour a little tighter. I should explain what that means. So when you pour tight, that's stiff. So think of concrete that as it's placed, it just doesn't go anywhere and that's tight. But then loose concrete allows you to move it around easier and, and it flows better. And so there's always a balance between the two. You need, you need your strength, your PSI. You want that to be whatever the engineer specs or your code requires. Adding too much water can lower that, so we don't want to do that. But we also want to actually work the mix, and we don't want to work too hard. Because all of this, concrete works very hard on the body. Forming is, placing it, etc. So there's just a balance there. So we don't want it to be too tight where we can't move it where we need to, and we don't want it to be too loose where it just runs like water. Pretty good, dude. I gotta see what that timestamp was. That's such a good one. Okay, I don't know, I'll check the timestamps. Makes them give in and cry. Gotta do the vibrato. Okay, anyway. Boom shakalaka. Live and let die. Never really been a big fan of the Paul McCartney version of that song, probably because I had never heard it before I heard Axl Rose sing it. Anyway, this was a very productive day. We're music. not done yet. In the next video, we're gonna get into rebar. By the way, there's the spreader cleats going back over the top. 
Those are 24 inches wide That's by 12 music. inches deep. We'll get into the rebar specs and all of that stuff in the next video. But for this video, you can see that it took us 40 minutes to run the liner. <laughs> yeah, that's why I say it. It only took, what, three and a half hours to actually form the thing and raise it to grade? So there's still some work to be done. We've got to add more stakes and things like that. But it's all iterative. You don't want to go too, get too far ahead of yourself or you just make your own, <laughs> you just make your own job very miserable. So thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. This is a fun project. I like shortening these videos. It's a lot less editing time for me. And I think, I think that it, it actually is way better to see the process um what would you say instead of like a high level view like time lapse or the drone actually get in there and go slower so we will see you in the next video if you feel like it you can hit that subscribe button or that thumbs up make sure you email a link to your mom nope i'm just i'm getting out of here it's too early not even six o'clock yet what kind of a person is up this early People who like to be productive in life, that's who. So for those of you that are early risers, let's all give ourselves a pat on the back. All right, see you in the next video.